Coming up, we have stories about... Updates to two existing stories, poor roommate etiquette, dinner table disagreements, disagreements over college majors, poorly timed pregnancy reveals, birthday gift purchases gone wrong, and of course, spicy stories, a spicy mother-in-law story, and a happy follower submission update. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder with another Reddit story for you, but this one is actually an update, right? This is an update from a follower submission, uh, and this one goes, you gave me great advice and I could not be happier. OP, if you happen to be in chat and uh, and you want to claim this, feel free. That's up to you, though. Hey, Dusty, love the team and the content you produce. You and Candy Thunder are the best. Not too long ago, you read my story about if I was the a-hole for canceling a date due to constantly being tested. I agreed with all the points you made and especially agreed that I dodged a bullet with that woman. Since then, I, 29 male, soon to be 30, have found who I believe to be the most wonderful woman I have ever met. And she is now my girlfriend. We have been together a little over four months now and things couldn't be any better. There have been some points to work out as we're trying to maneuver our relationship situation since we both have been single for a while, but nothing too serious. I knew she was special to me as we went on a zoo date the other day and I found myself tearing up while we listened to a song in the car called Cover Girl by Big Time Rush. Basically, the song is about a guy who finds that special girl and sees past her insecurities because of how much he cares for her. Sometimes she feels insecure, but I wanted her to know that's the way I see her. She is my cover girl, and I could not be happier. I honestly just wanted to thank you for such a great take on my story and reassuring me that I was not in the wrong for canceling a date with someone who is not for me. Now, I found someone who I enjoy every moment with. Thank you, Dusty. Does the girlfriend follow too? I don't know. Uh, I don't, I, I don't know, but I tell you what, we're going to throw some, some green flags up this way. Um, heck yeah, that is awesome. That is, that is so stinking cool. Um, a, a little bit, a, a little extra tidbit for you as you're, as you're entering this, this next phase here. And, and I'm not going to say play it, play it carefully because I, I don't think play it, playing it carefully is, is the right move here. But I do think that as you're entering into a relationship with somebody and as you feel like, as you feel like this person is, is the one they're like everything. And I, I don't know if you feel that way yet, but it's really easy to like fully open yourself up. Uh, and, and some people aren't ready for that quite yet. You know what I mean? So there's gotta be like a reciprocation in here. Uh, and with candy thunder and I, you know, it was, it was, it was like very, very quick, very quick. I'm like, here's all of me, all the crazy. Uh, hope it doesn't scare you away. And it didn't. So I think if it's the right person, like you don't have to worry about that so much. But I do think at the beginning of a relationship, you do have to kind of play it a little bit slow uh, it, so that you so that you don't don't spook people off. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, and a lot of people are 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 apprehensive because of bullshit they've been through before. So I think if you're in tune with, uh, with your girlfriend here, which congratulations, freaking, uh, getting the, getting the exclusive title there as well. Round of applause for you. Uh, yeah, good luck. Good luck. And I hope it all goes well for you. Um, I know how exciting it is to find that person. You're like, dang, this feels like this feels like, yes. Uh, just breathe and take it slow. So happy for you. That's awesome. And look at that. We actually did some good guys. We actually did some good. That is amazing. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder with another Reddit story for you. This one is from AITA and is titled, Am I the Astronaut for Having My Partner Stay Over a Lot? So, I've been living with a close friend of mine, Emma, for the past year and a half. Mm, roommate, there we go. Both of us are women in our early 20s and rent a two-bedroom flat. I've been friends with Emma since we were in middle school, and we haven't had any issues living together until now. We're both introverts, but we can enjoy each other's company when we feel like hanging out. At the beginning of July, I started dating a guy, Mac, male, also early 20s. At first, Mac and I would only hang out a couple of times a week, and Mac would usually sleep over at my place. Mac lives with his family, so naturally we preferred my place over his. However, we quickly fell head over heels for each other, and for the past month, maybe a month and a half or so, we've been seeing each other more often. 
Mac usually comes over Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and sometimes Sunday or Thursday as well. Whenever Mac is staying over, I always give Emma a heads up. Emma knew I was really into Mac, and she seemed to be happy for me when we started dating. Also, to note, we have separate bathrooms, so we only share a living room and kitchen. When Mac is over, we tend to stay in my room. The only time we take up common space is when we're cooking. We do like to cook together. Emma never indicated having an issue about Mac being here. She has her own boyfriend of a year who has his own house, so she goes to him, mostly on weekends. Today, I got an angry text from Emma while I was at work. When Mac sleeps over, he always leaves with me when I go to work, but last night we got home super late after a concert, and he was sleeping when I got up to go to work. He had today off, so I let him sleep in, and then he couldn't leave until someone was home because I didn't want to leave the front door unlocked. He doesn't have a key. Emma got home a little earlier than usual and thought she was alone until she saw Mac walking from my bathroom to my bedroom. Emma told me that she's tried to be cool because she's happy that I'm in a relationship, but she feels like Mac is always here. She's also annoyed because I've never formally introduced them and said it's like she basically has been living with a stranger for the past two months. I feel bad that I made her feel that way. I didn't mean to make her feel uncomfortable and honestly thought that our arrangement was fine since we're mostly in my room when Mac is over. We're quiet and respectful, and we don't share a bathroom, so it's not like Mac is hogging the bathroom or using up the toilet paper. I'll admit that I've never actually introduced Mac to Emma. He's pretty shy, and I've kind of been waiting for the perfect time. Emma asked me how I'd like it if she had her boyfriend over three to four nights a week, and now I'm not sure. I sort of get it because I'm also an introvert who likes their space, but it's not like Mac is here five to seven nights a week. Am I the astronaut for having my boyfriend over so often? Yeah, Nelly, never formally introduced them. I'm like, well, yeah, you're a little bit of an asshole for that, um, for not introducing some, especially if, if that person is going to be in a situation where they're going to be in your home alone with your roommate. It's kind of a prerequisite would be a formal introduction. Um, <laughs> Mag, so weird to not have introduced her to a man basically living in her home. Yeah, yeah. Emma pays rent, boyfriend doesn't. Is he using any kind of utilities, though? I mean, except for that one time when he was there a little bit longer than OP. It's not like he's causing any kind of increase in utility or cost or anything. When you have a roommate, these things need to be discussed prior. And OP does discuss any time he's going to stay. He's just staying more often now. Now, like, what... I, I think Emma, I feel like Emma's situation could easily be just like this right now. Now she's only, her boyfriend isn't over all the time because he has his own place. If he didn't, she'd be in the same boat here. Now being left alone with somebody's boyfriend that you don't even know, that's a problem. That's one of these. That's a red flag. Like OP, come on. Like you wouldn't want somebody to do that to you and you would feel uncomfortable as well. Uh, you should have introduced them Early on in this process, probably before he started staying over regularly, you should have introduced them because if you were sleeping in a house that a stranger was sleeping in, you might feel a little bit uncomfortable too. Um, so, so maybe for that, I, I think generally though, for if you're dating somebody, there's an assumption that they're going to be over more often. They're not leaving messes. They're not making anybody uncomfortable. It was just this one isolated incident where you let him sleep in. And because of that, he was kind of stuck in the house alone until somebody else got there. And then you didn't even give her a heads up that that was happening. That's a problem. That's poor roommate etiquette. I, I feel like Emma, she only spoke up whenever this one thing happened. Now, she Emma is kind of acting like it's been a problem before this. And I don't, th I don't see anything that's a problem before this, except for that they haven't been introduced to each other. Other than that, there's no, there's no kind of negative that's been, that's been placed on her. I don't know though, but even if, even if they haven't been introduced, is it the same kind of situation when he has stayed over all these other times with OP, not having been introduced? Ask on five only because of no introduction. There is no five. There is no five. Let's review the scale here for a second. So four is you could have done it differently. Three is you should have done it differently. Two is you definitely shouldn't have done that. And one is you're a terrible human. Um, definitely not an ask on one thing. I do think that this specific instance where she left him there without even giving giving uh, Emma a heads up that he was going to be there is it definitely shouldn't have done that. Situationally, I'll say ask on two here. Generally, for having him over, you guys are, are sticking to yourself. You're not sticking to yourself. That's not a weird. Sticking to your own your own areas. That's not a, that's, that sounds wrong too. You guys are keeping to yourself. You're not making messes. You're not causing her any kind of pain except for you're there. You don't have as many opportunities to hang out with Emma uh, as you did before. And maybe that's the root behind the problem. I don't feel like you did anything wrong except for not, not introducing him sans this one 
uh, this one scenario where you left him there and she had no idea. That is a two. Prior to this, I think it is a it is a three. You should have done it differently. You should have introduced him as soon as he started staying the night. So this one this one instance, yeah, I feel like it's pretty bad. Um, but before that, I feel like it's something you should have done differently. It doesn't mean you're a huge asshole for it. Sue Becca, Dustyism. What's my Dustyism now? I got a lot of them. I have a lot. Trista asked on three. I don't think she did. she's a terrible human. I don't think so either. Two for this situation, though. Two is you definitely shouldn't have done that because if that had happened to you and some stranger walked out of her bedroom while you were while you were prancing around with a towel on or something, thinking nobody was there, you'd be pretty pissed off too. And it's a definitely shouldn't have done that. Hey, it's a crusty wonder here with an update to a previous post. This is an update for the Am I the Astronaut for Ruining My Friend's Vacation. The update's comment was September 9th, 2024, two days after the original post. Piggybacking off top comment because there's an issue with posting an update, here's what happened. I spoke with Mary on text. She said that she agreed on most part, and they have both had a problem with me for ages because I invited them to, or only organized, adult-only events and nothing family-friendly, which isn't true. I was the one who organized her baby shower. Time out real quick. We have to give a little bit of a recap because this was the story, in case you weren't here, this was the story where they, basically three couples went on vacation. OP is the only, like childless couple um and she got she enjoyed herself and the other two ladies that were with her uh were pissed off about her enjoying herself because they felt like they were stuck with the kids also their husbands didn't help at all and they weren't pissed at their husbands they were pissed at op which was bullshit so uh after they got back from vacation like a like a ways after at least a week they messaged her all pissy and she's like okay i guess you guys suck so this is the continuation of that I added both of my ex-friends to a group chat to discuss my feelings. Throughout the interaction, no apology for their passive-aggressive comments or even acknowledgement that I tried to be accommodating. I gave them better rooms, organized massages, kept our shared space organized, made all the dinner reservations, helped prep snacks, got gifts for them and the kids. Mary just said that she's sorry it's come to this, and Kate just ignored me. I was so disappointed in these women who I thought were my friends. I blocked them and unfollowed them on social media. I'm going to share this Reddit post with our mutual friends who want the tea. Told Jake about it. He just said, good riddance. I'm going to I'm going to Japan next March and Fiji in December for a wedding. I'll be posting on social media with the caption, finally, a real vacation. Thank you to the person who suggested it. Relevant comment here. Commenter, out of curiosity, what did your mutual friends think about it? P.S. Your NTA. Original OP, I spoke to a few others and they kind of mentioned that they knew and they also got some comments on other stuff in the past, so they were including these two for my sake. I think I'll be fine on the friendship front. Uh, well, I mean, it's good to know, OP. It's good to know that these that these biznatches are at least, you know, are at least consistent with their biznatchery. Um, there's a new word for you, the biznatchery. Um, what cowards though, really, right? Like what cowards to not even say anything to your face to wait till after vacation uh, when you come back and then be like, we really don't appreciate you going out and having fun. Okay. Um, <laughs> the general general vibe was like they wanted OP to to offer to take care of their kids. They didn't want to ask. They wanted her to like get up and offer, even though she she arranged and paid for massages for them. She arranged all of the the meal, the meal planning stuff. She went above and beyond, but they expected her to do more to relieve them of their children so they could go out and have some fun too. And the the consensus before was that we didn't think, we didn't think that uh not we didn't think. Well, yeah, we didn't think it was that it was probably a problem until like one of the last days whenever whenever she went out and their husbands went out and partied and had fun. We think that was the kicker where it was like salt in the wound and uh, and they got all butthurt because they felt like they were stuck at home. Why they were stuck at home and their husbands didn't offer to stay is uh, is a big old question mark. So. You're better off without them. We know that now. And their response whenever you confronted them about this after the fact uh, just solidifies that for you. They're just, it's cowardly. 
They'd rather, they'd rather, they would rather be passive aggressive and cowardly and bitch about you behind your back and wait until wait and stew over it and then speak up about something rather than speaking up when you can actually do something to address what they're pissed off about. So whatever. I think you're, you've got a great take on it. You say, I'll be fine on the friendship front. You're right. Zero is greater than negative one. You didn't know that this was a negative two until all this shit went down, but now you know, and you're going to be a much happier person for it. So good for you. Ugh. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder with an update to the Am I the Astronaut for posting a heartwarming video of my friend. This is a response from Foster Dad Max. I'm Max, the person mentioned in this post. I wasn't planning on responding because honestly, posting about this again after being asked not to is incredibly immature. But I've had enough, and I think it's important to set the record straight so everyone can see how inconsiderate and careless you really are. First off, I've always been clear with anyone who meets Dexter that photos of him cannot be shared online without blurring his face. This isn't new information to you. I've explained it many times and even reminded you repeatedly after you've posted pictures of him uncensored on multiple occasions. My fostering agreement explicitly states that no uncensored images of Dexter can be posted online. Violating this could put my ability to foster him at risk. He could be taken away from me, and yet you continue to ignore this. I even reiterated these rules at the party, encouraging everyone everyone to take photos, but under no circumstances were they to be posted publicly without prior censoring. You were told, once again, not to reveal his face or mention our exact location, including the city. But what did you do? You go ahead and post a video with Dexter's face completely visible, along with the city tagged as the location. I don't know whether you're just being willfully ignorant or deliberately trying to provoke me. I've been lenient far too many times because you're my best friend's sister and Dexter enjoys spending time with your son. But this is the final straw. You've endangered Dexter and breached his privacy. I had to threaten legal action just to get you to remove the video, and it's not like you didn't know the risks. His biological parents have previously threatened to kidnap him, and your actions have put him in jeopardy. Now I'm scrambling to fix this situation with his social worker. The worst part is we don't know if it has been seen by his parents because it went so viral. Now I'll admit I did lose my temper with you, but after so many warnings, I was at my limit. I hope you take the negative comments from Reddit to heart and really reflect on why you keep doing this. Your overwhelming need to always be the center of attention is damaging your relationship with friends and family. This isn't just about a cute video. It's about your lack of respect for others' boundaries and the impact impact of your actions. I genuinely think you should consider therapy to explore why you have this urge to prioritize your own needs for attention over the safety and privacy of others. Your son is still welcome at any future gatherings, but you'll need to arrange for him to be picked up by me or your sister. If you step foot on my property again, I will not hesitate to report you for harassment. Do not contact me again unless it's strictly regarding your son's arrangements with Dexter. I'm not responding again. I'll send you a link to this comment. Hopefully that will help you understand why you're such a toss pot. Damn. Shit. You know what? Uh, you can tell just from this response that that um, that he's taking parenting of Dexter seriously. Like Papa Bear. He had to go Papa Bear mode here. Uh, and was still was still a little bit reserved with the response here. And not like you know, he wasn't going full rage mode here. He was fully explaining himself in detail as to why this is not okay. And also, I do like that he's taking it back and getting to the root of it and saying, look, you need help because this is, this is a repeated problem. Why why you have to basically say, screw everybody, everybody else, including their privacy and safety of children. Uh, I want to be the center of attention. I want the views. I want the clicks. Like being willing to put a child in danger so you can get views on the internet is ASCON one behavior. And we took you there last time. Actually, we might have an, we might have had an ASCON two because there was there was a, a bit of potential ignorance involved here, but <sighs> dad clarifies all of that for us. This is not ignorance, even though he says there's some willful ignorance in here, but but she's been warned several times. Several times. This is not the first time this has happened. It has happened many times. So no ASCON one. Also, DFHB reject here. Um, yeah, you know what? It's it's not cool. It's not cool. Wow, that was a glitchy animation. You see that crap? Hold on, we'll try that again. What is a toss pot? 
I'm glad you asked, Nisi. I meant to ask. What is a toss pot? Like a chamber pot? Stupid or obnoxious person? Never heard toss pot. Where, where does this come from? A bed, yeah, so a bedside toilet. A bedside turlet. A toss pot. It says, toss pot is a British, English, and Irish English insult used to refer to a stupid or contemptible person or a drunkard. Uh, yeah. Yeah, a stupid, incontemptible, and a drunkard. Or just, you're such a toss pot. I get it. I get it. <laughs> Rachel, sounds old. <laughs> sounds old. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I bet I bet there are still people using toss pots. You know, it, it happens. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Krusty Wonder here again with another Reddit story for you. This one is actually one of these. It is a spicy story, i.e. dramatic, i.e. full of complicated story developments. The title of this story is, Am I the astronaut for telling my 14-year-old daughter that she's average looking? I, female 39, have a very insecure daughter, female 14, who has a depressingly unhealthy obsession with her looks. She often avoids mirrors and pictures because her mood instantly drains when she sees herself. She constantly asks her father and me if we think she's pretty, and we always tell her the same thing, that she's a beautiful girl inside and out. As I understand how most teenage girls are with their body image, as I was one at some point myself, my daughter's vanity is not only becoming exhausting to those around her, but I fear it's causing her to slowly lose herself. Yesterday, I decided to sit her down and chat with her about this to discuss what's bothering her and to see if she's willing to visit a therapist. She told me she didn't want to talk about it, but as her mother, of course, I'm going to be worried about her, so I insisted. She finally agreed. A few minutes into this conversation, she asked exactly this. Mom, I want you to be completely honest with me. That means no sugarcoating. The kids at my school think I'm ugly and say I look like a bird because I have a big nose. Do you really think I'm beautiful or are you just lying? I'm an honest person, so I gave her the most honest answer that I had. I told her she was average looking like most people in the world are and that it's not a bad thing to have an average appearance. It's a bad thing for your parent to tell you that you're average looking. She immediately got up and left without saying a word and just went into her room for the rest of the night. Today, she's been cold and distant, and I think I upset her, which wasn't my intention at all. Am I the astronaut? Yep, you f***ing suck. Let's get somebody up here to give some additional feedback here. Candy Thunder. <laughs> OMG, it's Candy Thunder. This is what we teach our children. Um, you can be the most beautiful person in the world. And I mean this with my whole heart. If what's inside is shit, then you're shit. It doesn't matter what, uh, it, in my opinion, it does not matter what this person looks like on the outside. It matters how they treat other humans. And clearly this 14-year-old girl is going through insecurities. And that's what this is all about. She's not obsessed with her looks. She is insecure about her looks. Right. And she's trying to figure out things about herself and instead of helping with the insecurity you just f fed it like a goddamn midnight snack and you made it so much worse because you are the person when I look at my children I do not look at like they're beautiful to me and not just because of their face or the way that they look like they're beautiful to me because they're my children and so the most honest answer I have when they ask me if I think they're beautiful is absolutely Absolutely, you're beautiful. Everything about you is beautiful, but not just the way that you look. It's, it's your brain. It's your humor. It's, it's so many other things. It's the way that you're kind. It's the way that you pitch in. Like there's, there's so many things that make you beautiful. It's not just the way that your face looks. And that should have been, been your answer to build her up instead of just tearing her down and telling her that she's average. Because now for the rest of her life, she's going to feel average and a face does not make a person a person. Like, that's just what you are to the world. But you can be so much more than than just what's on the outside. I think you also have to understand that to a 14-year-old girl, average means bottom of the barrel. Yeah. Average is not a thing to strive to. Average is not a good thing. Average is like, is like a consolation prize. Average means ugly to a 14-year-old girl. So while, while to the rest of the world, average means average... 
It means the worst case scenario to a teenage girl. And also, I think you have to understand yes. that as a child, a child's view on themselves is, is rooted in how a parent views them. You were their person. They were around you more than they're around anybody. So leading up to this point for the past 14 years, she feels about herself how you feel about her because you are who taught her who she is. Exactly. So when you say something like, you are average. Now she has to accept that as the gospel truth because you're her person. You're the, you're her her guide through the world. And now she has to be like, well, shit, I guess I'm average. Until and just accept that. I And until I hope this happens, until the day she figures out I'm not average, I'm a human being. I have every right to be here just as much as everyone else. And she knows that she's not average. She's going to come for you because you're the one. You're the one that was supposed to be in her corner and you told her that you weren't like that's don't call people average and don't call your children average. That is, that's just a, that's saying like, you're just, yeah, whatever you're whatever. Yeah. Well, and, and also look at it this way. If she is insecure, if she was already insecure, yes, you fed that. And now it's a much bigger problem. And I see some comments here that are like, now she's never going to believe anybody who tells her that she's beautiful. They're going to think that, that or she's going to think oh, that they're yeah. lying. And yeah, now it's going to be a complex. Now it's going to be something she has to wrestle with for the rest of her life. And that's terrible. But also, until until your child achieves a level of confidence with your help, where they start to see and believe the true beauty inside of themselves, until then, they're not going to start showing it. So, so for her, right. she's right. keeping herself yes. muted because she believes there's nothing to let shine. And now you've just reinforced that and said, yeah, there's really nothing to shine. So why should she try? Why should she dress cute? Why should she do her hair? Why should she, why should she do anything to try to let her shine out? Because she doesn't think there's any shine to let out. And not every nose has to be a tiny little button nose. No, I have a bigger nose and I don't care. Ava and I were just talking about this the other day. I'm like, everybody has a nose. A nose is there to breathe. It doesn't make you who you are. And the fact that kids are picking on her, if even if she was beautiful, kids would pick on her. And it doesn't, like, even if she was the most beautiful girl in the entire school, she is still going to get picked on because teenagers are, are brutal. They have no filter and they're just mean. And this should have been the conversation that the mom had, not... Well, I'm an honest person, so I gave her an honest answer. No, you were trying to take your daughter down a peg because you thought she was becoming vain about her looks. And in, somehow, in my opinion, that's what you did. Somehow, like you, OP talks about how her insecurity is mm -hmm. is affecting other people around her. How the f were you like? I know, <laughs> I know how to help that. Yeah, yeah. Let's just let's just kick it a few times while it's down. That'll help her not be insecure anymore. Maybe she'll stop caring. Like, way to go. You right. made it exponentially worse here. Let's bring Ava Ava Thunder up to give some feedback on this. Ava, come on up. Hey, oh, Ava Thunder, fresh out of school here. Step on up. Um, as as a teenage girl, okay. If if a parent told you that you were average looking, how would you take that? <laughs> Ask on one ticket, holding it up. Uh, <laughs> but, but how would no. you how would you feel though? I'd be if, so mad. Yeah, here, stand I wouldn't even be sad. I'd be mad. Mad at your parent? Yes. Like well, if mom told me I was average looking, I'd be so mad. Would that hurt your feelings? It would hurt my feelings You'd so bad. You'd be mad because it hurt I'd be you. mad because it would, hurt, it would hurt my feelings so bad. It's the, not the way. Not the way OP. Not the way OP. Like, okay, so me? so what 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 the daughter in this story said was, "Mom, I want you to be completely honest with me. That means no sugar coating. The kids at my school think that I'm ugly and say I look like a bird because I have a big nose. Do you really think I'm beautiful, or are you just lying?" And mom's supposed to say that I'm beautiful. She's supposed to say that I'm beautiful. I don't care. Look at Candy Thunder coaching Ava Thunder here on, <laughs> on not walking out of frame. Yeah, I, yeah, no, I'd be so mad. I, I just don't think there's any right to say that, honestly. You're supposed, I feel like, like, I don't know. My mom sees, thinks that I'm like so pretty. And so does Dustin. Like all my family thinks that I'm pretty. Of course, you're beautiful. And so I, like, I, would I think... don't, I feel bad if one of them called me like, but like to me, average is like down there. Like it's like average is, is average the bottom. Average is the yeah. bottom. So yeah, like that would hurt my feelings. Better. I mean, hell, if you came in here OP and said below average, you'd really be screwed. But average, uh, average is not a good answer there. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, thank you for sharing your feedback with us, Ava Thunder, ladies and gentlemen. Awesome. Thanks for jumping in up here in prompt two.
Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder once again with another story for you. Another spicy story for you. Hey yo, you can hear it sizzle. This is from the AITA subreddit and is titled, Am I the Askonaut for Answering My Daughter's Question Honestly? My 43 female daughter, 14 female, recently asked me whether or not my pregnancy with her was planned. I didn't know why she would be wondering that, but she said it's because she is an only child and me and my husband, 46 male, had only known each other a year when she was conceived. These were the things she already knew, obviously, and she was curious whether or not she had been a mistake. I obviously don't want to lie to my daughter, especially not about something like this. I told her that her intuition was correct. She was indeed a mistake. Hold up. Time out. Red flag. There's there's unplanned and there's mistake. I think agreeing with the word choice here was a fail. Came on. But I also made it clear to her that even if we didn't want to have her, we still did and we love her. Also, another red flag, word choice sucks, OP. Even if we didn't want to have her, I think what you hopefully meant was even though we didn't intend, we didn't plan on having a child, didn't want, mistake, words are hard because they're important. I explained to her that obviously, if me and my husband could go back in time and change the past, of course we would change things, make sure no unplanned accidents happened and things went the way we want instead of how they did go in reality. But we can't change the past. She is here now and we love her a lot, despite the unfortunate facts around her birth. What the f***? Hold on. How come every time you open your mouth, you make it worse, OP? Like, if you're saying now if you could go back, you'd change it to make sure she was never born? And somehow this is, this is like okay to you holy wow i don't even know what to say i don't think we're gonna get through to this person she seemed to take it well at that time but ever since that conversation she seemed very down hasn't really wanted to talk to us at all i'm not stupid (laughs) told your words were important so i know it's because she's ashamed and upset about being a mistake i tried to tell her again what happened is unfortunate, but what's done is done, and we love her despite it. What the? She was not very receptive to that, so I told her that if she's going to be upset at the answer to her question, she shouldn't ask it. I'm not going to lie to her about how she was conceived, even if the truth is uncomfortable. She got even more upset at that. I'm not sure if more angry or sad or both. I'm not sure what to do. Was I in the wrong for telling her the truth? I thought a 14-year-old would be handling it fine. Should I have lied instead? Okay, we have an update here, but before we get into that, what do y'all think? What do y'all think? (laughs) Change my vote to ask on one. Bizzo. Dude. Mistake. I don't even know if this is what she meant. I don't even know if she meant to use the words like mistake. If we could go back in time, this, there's no way to get get around it. Saying if we go back in time, we'd make sure no unplanned accidents happen so life could go the way we wanted it to go. (laughs) you. The fact that you still think this way, OP, and, and most people, like most children that are born are unplanned. I feel like the way it should go is like, yeah, it's unplanned, but you become a different person at that time. You become a responsible parent. It changes the trajectory trajectory of your life. And in my case, it was for the better. I'm still an asshole. I'd be a much bigger asshole without kids. Much bigger. All right, let's dive into the update. I'm providing an update because I think that the people here were right and my wording wasn't the best. Yeah, wasn't the best. Wasn't the best. It was average. So I decided to apologize to my daughter, tell her that I regret saying what I said to her and that I should have spoken to her in different words, explain the situation to her differently, and that I'm sorry that my words upset her and I should. I should what? (laughs) Not so good with the words, OP. Okay, also, I'm sorry that my words upset you does not an apology make. I'm sorry that you got upset by what I said. Not a apology. (sighs) She told me that she isn't mad or angry at us, that it's not our fault for feeling the way that we do. She told us that it is what it is, and she's just going to have to live with being what she is. I told her that that's a very mature view and that I'm proud of her. What? Hold up. You just heard your child said, I'm going to have to just accept what I am, which is an accident, an unwanted child. And you're like, that's very mature. I'm very proud of you. No matter what might have happened in the past, she is here with us now and we love her and I'm glad that she can understand that. As a reward for being so mature, I ordered her some sushi, her favorite food. She's still a bit quiet, but I think with some more weeks, she's going to get over it and be just fine. I'm thankful for the people here, even if some people were a bit harsh, that they made me realize how unfortunate my wording had been. 
So thanks for the deserved judgment. I don't think you fixed anything here, OP. I don't think, okay, top comment on this. YTA, is this a joke? If me and my husband could go back in time and change the past, of course we would change things. You literally told your daughter if you and your husband had a chance to, for a do-over, you would have chosen to never have her. And you're wondering why she's upset? What's done is done and we love her despite it? Actually crazy to say to a child. Are you just like the most unfeeling person alive? How on earth did you think saying that heartless stuff to a child would go? You literally told her you never wanted her. If you had the choice to do it over, she wouldn't be here but since you can't and you're stuck you'll make the best of it i'm honestly starting to wonder if she knew to ask this question because you and your husband treat her like an unwanted inconvenience on your lives and she just wanted confirmation and as for her response you telling her not to ask a question if she wasn't prepared for the response maybe you the adult shouldn't have answered her so thoughtlessly and then expected that a child would work through these emotions in a way that didn't offend you there was only one immature reaction in this situation and it is 100 yours commenter mic drop OP, f you. Candy Thunder, would you like to come up and say some words? I don't have very many except for those two. Ladies and gentlemen, Candy Thunder. <laughs> oh, that was that was epic. Mic drop, middle finger, you done. There's that episode of Bluey where where she's like, it's like mom school, and then Chili says that sometimes we all fail mom school. Mm -hmm. um, and we do. Sometimes we f up. This mom just completely flunked out of mom school. And I don't think she's going to be let back in because she thinks in a couple of weeks her daughter's just going to work through this complex situation and then be like, yeah, I love you, even though you didn't want me. Like, I, I, you can't tell a child 14 is not is not mature. 14 is old enough to understand things in the world, but they are not even done growing. Their brain is still still processing things and they do not understand emotions on a complex adult level. So telling your child that if we could go back in time and change it, then we would. And so Ava, um, like her last birthday, she, she said to me, I was thinking, Hey, I probably wouldn't be here if you hadn't had a miscarriage. And I was like, yeah, you're, you're right. And you know, and if you have a miscarriage, that's not something you heal from. That's something that you always have with you. And I told her in that moment that yes, like, you would not be here. You would not be my child. I would have a different child. And, um, but when we were talking about it and going through, you know, what had happened and everything, I realized like that this is my child, whether, whether or not this was the first intended child I was supposed to have. I'm like, this is my child. I can't ever think about what could have been because that is not my life. My life is the fact that I had Ava. And if I were to, and I've read stories where moms have said, you know, I wish I, had, I wish I hadn't miscarried and I had had that child instead. They're on Reddit. You can go find them. Not something that we'll ever probably read on here. But to say these things to a child and expect them to respond in an adult way is insane. The way that I had this conversation with Ava was in on a level of a 15-year-old girl. I did not have the conversation with her and expect her to take this in an adult way, but to to tell your child that I don't want, I didn't want you. You were a mistake. I should have never had you is something that I don't think that you can ever, ever fully come back from. And it, I don't know. It just makes me sad. It makes me sad to, for anyone to say that to a child. And this is going, first of all, yet 14 is probably one of the most emotionally volatile oh my times God. that you'll have. So, so to imprint, this kind of shit onto there. And Ellen, I saw your comment there, hearing similar things echo in your head for the rest of your life. She's not going to forget this. No. This is going to cause all kinds of problems that she's going to be working on for the rest of her life. And and OP, you're just like, I feel like it was the right thing to do. And even after you got a redo on it, with with Redditor comments, you came back, you're like, I took your comments into consideration and I and I, I revised my previous mm. my previous statement by making it even worse, as if that, that could happen in any way. But... And I just, I don't, I don't understand why you expected maturity from your 14 year old daughter, but you showed no level of maturity when answering her questions. None. You, you put no thought behind how the answers you gave your child would impact her. And you said, because I thought she was mature enough to handle it. No child ever, 10, 14, 18, 25, 42, I don't care how old your child is. No child ever wants to hear that they were a mistake. 
that that is a poor, poor choice of words yeah. to tell a child that they were a mistake and that if you could go back in time, you would not have them. Unplanned blessing. Unplanned blessing. That's the only thing she needed to how, do. How, how hard is it to pivot that word, right? Tony Spark, you got a thought here? Well, one of the other comments that was on there um, was referencing like the over it. Oh, she's she'll get over it. And it says that girl is defeated. She's not over it and probably won't ever get over it. Yeah. No, this is... Um, and I've keep talking about this, but um, Inside Out too talks about core beliefs and how our core beliefs are not always good things. Like no. sometimes our core beliefs are bad things that happen to us, and it changes who we are. This is one of those moments. This is a core belief for this girl. Yeah, she's going to know always deep down inside of her that her parents, that she was a mistake, and whether or not that's how the the parent intended mm. to deliver that information does not matter. The words are out of your mouth. You cannot take them back. Yeah. Well, and you know, so we we see a snapshot with these stories, right? We see we see this little sliver of their life where it's this one moment, but you know, based on Opie's response, what the what the previous thirteen years have been like, and it led her to a spot where asking this question made sense. Once she became emotionally uh, emotionally aware enough to be like, wait a second, am why do I feel the way that I do? Do I feel the way that I do because they didn't want me and still don't? And then asked it, it, the amount of courage it would take for a child to ask that question in the first place is astounding. But to take that answer and and not be outwardly angry with your parent about it, but just to internalize it says a lot about what she's internalized right. to this point. Yeah, and I agree. Gosh, dang. Like, I just I, I think the thing we have to remember is people are the way they are for a reason. So OP probably grew up in a similar kind of environment and received a similar kind of treatment and was told similar kind of things and had to deal with it. And if she survived it, her daughter should be able to as well. Uh, that's her thinking on it. So she probably, she doesn't think that she's doing anything wrong because she doesn't know better. And that's, that's the tough part. And I've been reading a lot about, about, you know, the, the break the chain, the formative years for, for children and parents, like learning how to parent. And right now we, as a people do not do a good job of teaching parents how to parent. And that uh, that's one of the, it's one of the reasons we have the problems that we do later on in their life. So uh, it's tough. And here's here's a good example. It sucks. Yep. Blah. Ladies and gentlemen, Candy Thunder jumping in for that spicy feedback uh, to to give you the answer here. OP, who asked the question, am I the asking up for answering my daughter's question? Honestly, yeah, you're the worst. Uh, giving you ask on one. We've got uh, I had the ask on three ticket there, but nope, nope, that was wrong. Here it is. Here's ask on one. You are there. Also, you get this. I know you don't think you're doing anything wrong, but you're doing some shit terribly wrong. Uh, and I think it would be advantageous for you both to get into therapy separately and at some point together as well. But right now you're doing a lot of damage. A lot. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder with yet another Reddit story for you. This one from AITA is titled, Am I the Astronaut for Celebrating My Pregnancy at My Friend's Mom's Funeral? I am 29 female and I have been with my husband for four years. Me and my husband have been trying for a child since before we were married and have been unsuccessful. My friend Sean, fake name, and his girlfriend Marie have been very supportive during that time. Me and Sean have been friends since high school and I've known him and his family for years. His mother was never the nicest towards me and harassed me constantly. She called me names like Miss Piggy and Miss Bod. Look it up. Bod. B-A-W-D. Huh. Okay. Sean would never say anything about it, but I understood because this was his mother. However, I stopped going to his mother's house after our last interaction. When she found out that I had been trying to have a child, she told my husband, Make sure you use a DNA test. You never know with this one. Wow. Queen B. My heart was shattered and I could never face his family again. I obviously continued to be friends with Sean and I also kept trying for a baby. About five months after the interaction with Sean's mother, we found out that I was pregnant. I only told the people closest to me, like family. Two weeks ago, Sean's mother passed and we attended the funeral. I found it disrespectful to not accept the invite, so I went. I was very uncomfortable considering I didn't like the woman and most of the attendees knew she wasn't a fan of me either. A couple of people gave me weird looks and made snarky comments, but I just ignored it. That was until a group of women came up to me and made comments about my pregnancy. I was very excited about it and was happy to speak about it, but when Sean's girlfriend Marie heard, she said, how disgusting, if only Renee could hear this, Sean's mother. 
I found this very confusing since since she had been so supportive prior to today. I asked her if she had something to say to me, and that's when she went off. She called me disrespectful. Sean came over to try and calm her down, but then Marie said, Renee was right about you. You are a hussy. That's when I said, I sure hope my baby isn't the reincarnate of that bitch. Sean yelled at me and told me to leave. I tried apologizing to him, but he won't reply. I have been thinking about this, and I'm concerned that this has ruined our friendship. Edit. I understand how this can be hard to understand, so I'll try to clear this up. I didn't want to be disrespectful, so I went to the funeral to support my friend. He just lost his mother, and I am one of the only friends he had invited. I wasn't going to bring up my pregnancy, but those women brought it up, and I was excited about it. I guess I got caught up in the moment. I know what I said was inappropriate, and I understand where you guys are coming from. If you guys have any way of helping me apologize to Sean, please comment. Another edit. I was not going to the funeral with the intent of bragging about my pregnancy. I went to support my friend in his time of need like he had done for me. I may not have liked Renee, but it, but I do like Sean. I don't understand why everyone is so focused on the fact that I was there. I don't see how that is the problem. Uh, I mean, look, it does, it does make a difference that these people came up to her and were asking her about it. Uh, I think this is one of those things, though, that if you truly didn't, didn't like somebody that much, um, you probably shouldn't have gone. Because because a funeral is all about paying your respects. And if you weren't there to perform the main task of paying your respects, you, you were there to support your friend, but you ended up pissing your friend off so bad he wanted you to leave. So something got crosswired there. Um, and it's probably the comment where you're like, um, I hope I, I sure hope my baby isn't the reincarnate of that bitch. Um, that, yeah, that, that probably was an unnecessary statement. And by probably, I mean, definitely. Now, Marie getting all pissed off and saying, Renee was right about you. You are a hussy. Like, what the f*** does... A bod. That's what bod means. Hussy. Uh, yeah. What the what the what the f does does her being pregnant and at a funeral have to do with her being a hussy? One plus one does not equal hussy here. I'm not seeing how they bring all that together. Like what is she's? It's not like she's at the funeral trying to pick up dudes to take them to the car for twenty dollars. Like I don't understand the whole hussy part of this from from Renee in the first place. That was definitely unwarranted. Now, OP, you let this get pushed to a, a place where, where you were both inappropriate. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this out here. I'm going to throw it in everybody sucks here. It was definitely something you shouldn't have said. Celebrating your, your baby wasn't a celebration. You didn't throw a party there. People asked you and you got excited. Are you supposed to act like you're not excited about being pregnant? I don't think so. Uh, that is not, not what you did wrong here. I do think you probably shouldn't have gone, but you went to support your friend. It was saying what you said and allowing yourself to be escalated into a disrespectful level here. That is the problem here. It's an everybody sucks. Sean probably should have known better than uh, than to bring you to this thing and then immediately like say he wants you to go. Everybody sucks here. Nobody handled anything well here at all. I think you're probably one of the least assholes in all of this, um, but still a little bit of an asshole. So it's an everybody sucks. Everybody sucks. Money, that's what I was thinking. Uh, Willow Wicked. Oh, okay. Sounds like OP was in a normal conversation and the topic came up. She simply answered and participated in the topic of, dis of conversation. Yeah, I agree with that. She didn't sound like she she didn't celebrate and she wasn't like popping off a confetti cannon and being like, yeah, I'm having a baby and this bitch is dead. It wasn't like that. Uh, but, but Marie coming up and saying what she said goaded her into being disrespectful in return. Uh, of course, she didn't have to do that. She could have just maintained her composure and been NTA here. But... She decided to get into the mud and, and fight with her. Uh, and yeah, that's what happened. So, oof. Hey, Dusty Thunder here, and I wanted to thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed that content, and if you did, please make sure to like, subscribe, and most importantly, share. Also, you can find swag and so much more at dusty-thunder.com, and you'll find even more content on all of our platforms. We're on TikTok, YouTube. We now have an official Facebook page that we'll be posting stories to as well. We have podcasts on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and so much more. You can see all of our content platforms on Linktree, which is linked in my bio. Engage with us wherever you're enjoying content and do your best to avoid the Askonauts today. Thanks again.